In chapter 15, we covered investing in stocks. Now in chapter 16, we're going to cover investing in bonds. When you purchase stocks, that is known as equity financing. When you purchase bonds, this is known as debt financing. Okay? So we're going to talk about the background of bonds. Identify the different types of bonds. Identify factors that affect the return or the yield for investment in a bond. Describe how bonds are valued. Describe why some bonds are risky. We'll describe common bond investment strategies and explain how investing in bonds can fit within your financial plan. So you ready? Let's go. What are bonds? Bonds are a form of investments. Bonds are long-term debt securities issued by government agencies or by corporations. So you can buy bonds from the U.S. government. Sometimes you can buy bonds from your from the state government or your local municipality. Or bonds can be purchased from corporations. Bonds are what's known as the par value which is the face value of the bond or the amount returned to the investor at the maturity date when a bond is due. So for example, a bond may have a par value of $1,000. What does that mean? It means when a bond matures, the bond holder, the person who acquired the bond, will receive $1,000. Now, bonds have different maturity dates depending upon the type of bond, but on average, they mature between 10 and 30 years because, once again, bonds are a form of long-term debt security. Now, you can get bonds with shorter maturity time period. We'll talk about those, but most bonds issued by corporation or by government agencies are going to be long-term debt securities. Okay, now if you're the person who's issuing the bond, so you're that corporation or you're the government, you're required to make interest payments to the bondholder and to repay them the par value. So for example, if you purchase a bond that matures in 10 years, then every year, depending upon how frequently it could be, on an annual basis or a semi-annual basis, you receive interest payments from the bond issuer. And once that bond matures 10 years later, you receive the actual par value of the bonds. Now, bonds have different types of characteristics. One such feature we call a call feature. A feature on a bond that allows the issuer to repurchase the bond from the investor before maturity. What does that mean? Let's say you bought a bond that matures in 10 years again. So every year you're going to receive an interest payment from a bond issuer. But if that bond has a call feature, the bond issuer can call that bond or pay their, or repurchase the bond before maturity. So maybe after three or four years, they may decide that they're going to purchase the bond back from the bond holder, which allows them to save on those interest payments. So if a bond has a call feature, it simply means that that bond can be retired before its maturity date. Now, these bonds offer a slightly higher return. Why is that? I'm glad you asked that question. Well, because the bond holder, they don't know whether or not the bond issuer is going to call their bond in early. So for them to make a return on their investment, they're going to require a higher return if a bond has what's known as a call feature. Convertible bonds. If a bond is convertible, that buy can be converted 
into a state number of shares of the issued stock if the stock price reaches a specified price. So let's say you bought an AT&T bond. If that bond is convertible, then you will have the option to purchase AT&T stock at a set price. You're able to convert your bonds over into stock. Now, these type of bonds tend to have a lower return because the option of converting the bonds over to stock, especially at a specified price. So let's say for AT&T stock, you may have a contract that says, if the price goes to $75, then you're able to receive, you convert your stock over into bonds. And so that allows the person who bought the bond to convert their bond over to stock at a specified price. So because the bonds may be converted to stock, typically these type of bonds will offer a lower rate of return. A bond yield to maturity. When you use the term yield, we're really referring to the return on your investment, the rate of return on your investment. So we look at the annualized return on a bond if it's held to maturity. So held to maturity means you're going to keep the bond until its actual maturity date. So if a bond sells at par value, which is also known as face value, is yield to maturity equals the coupon rate. What you're saying, coupon rate, what is that? All right. Well, when you buy a bond, it has a stated rate of interest known as a coupon rate. Okay. That rate may be 5%, for example. So if a bond sells at its par value or its face value, it means that the its yield would be 5% and the coupon rate would be 5%. Now let's talk more about this yield. It may take a little while to explain, so bear with me. So the yield says, okay, what are other companies offering as a rate on their bonds? So let's just say, keep it simple. You have five companies issuing the bonds and all five are offering a 5% interest rate. That means that if I was to buy a bond from your competitor, they're all paying the same interest rate. So the yield would equal the coupon rate. Now, what if the yield is higher than the coupon rate? Again, you have five companies selling bonds. Let's say four of those companies are offering a 5% interest rate and one is only offering a 4% interest rate. You're the one offering the 4% rate on your bond. So your coupon rate is 4%, but the yield, the rate being offered by other companies, other competitors, is 5%. If that's the case, your bond will sell below its par value. Because people are saying, why should I pay you full price for your bond when I can buy another bond from a different competitor and get a higher yield or higher return on my investment. So to make things equal out, your bond will sell at a price below its par value, which is known as the bond seller and will be called a discount. Now, let's say again, same five companies. The other four are paying a 4% interest rate but your bond offers a 5% interest rate. In this case, the yield, the rate offered by your competitors, is less than your coupon rate. If that's the case, your bond will sell above its par value. Because you're saying, well, if you buy a bond from someone else, they're only paying you 4% interest, I'm offering you 5% interest. Now remember this. Let's say that you issued a bond on January 1st of 2020. Your bond hits the market. Okay? Your bond has a specified coupon rate. At that point in time, it's going to be the same rate that's been offered by other companies. Let's say that's 4%. 
all right now your bond is out there your bond is selling but now it is say july 1st of 2020 and the rates have changed and now the rate on bonds has went up to 5.2 percent well you can't change the rate on your bond your bond is still has a coupon rate of five percent but now the yield is up to 5.2 percent so now in july if your bond is still selling it will sell at a discount because now the yield is higher than your coupon rate so once your bond has been out there in the market it has a specified rate known as a coupon rate you cannot change that but as other bonds enter the market and interest rates are changing your bond will either sell at its par value it may sell below its par value or above its par value okay if you need to rewrite this section again and listen carefully so you understand how bonds are entered to the actual market now you can go to calculatorweb.com and there are bond calculators and these calculators give you estimated yield on bonds based upon their present price their coupon rate and based upon their maturity okay bonds trade in the secondary market so investors sell their bonds to other investors before they reach maturity so let's say that a corporation bought or a company buys a lot of bonds well they can actually sell those bonds to other investors before they reach the actual maturity day bond prices change in response to interest rate <laughs> so as i mentioned before once a bond has been issued it has a set interest rate and that bond may be on the market for some years now interest rates are going to fluctuate over time so depending upon what is the current yield that has an impact on the price those bonds will sell for at if their par value below par value or above par value brokers firms also take or to buy or sell bonds so just like they do stock brokers firms take orders from their clients to purchase bonds as well as to sell bonds now you probably heard of treasury bonds these are bonds issued by the government these are long-term debt security issued by the u.s treasury now i will say that there are certain treasury bonds that are not long-term there are some treasury bonds that mature in a time period of less than three months so not all u.s bonds treasury bonds are long-term but a lot of treasury bonds are long-term so these are bonds issued by the good old united states of american government so when you buy treasury bonds the payments are guaranteed by the federal government now again you're going to receive an interest payment each year or again it could be twice a year or it could be just once a year from the federal government but the interest you earn it is subject to federal income tax but exempt from state and local taxes now it is easy to sell these bonds in a secondary market because they are backed by the federal government so treasury bonds are bonds that are issued by the federal government typically they're long-term bonds but you can buy a u.s treasury bond with a shorter time period there are certain u.s treasury bonds that mature in a time period of three months or less okay we're going to come back and talk about more types of bonds as well as the bond market stay tuned